Shalom, Israel. You need to know what happened to your parents, to your forefathers, to those rebellious Jews that refused to embrace the Roman religion. You need to know that the last they saw of you, you were being snatched from their arms and loaded onto a ship. You need to know their fate. You need to know that when they were left behind, they were persecuted. That they were enslaved. And that they were tortured. All because of their belief in the laws, statutes, commandments, and their belief in the Most High Yah. You need to know that some, only after enduring great torture, loss, and pain, only then did they relent and submit to being lawless. But you also need to know that some stood firm on the word of the Most High Yah. You need to know Israel because these are your forefathers and some are a shining example of what we must be in these last days. Spain. So in 1492, on the same day that Jerusalem uh, fell, Spain expelled their Jews from Spain and many of the Jews fled into Portugal. So the question we need to ask is how many of the Jews from Spain fled into Portugal? And for that, let's take a look at some of the older references where it says, and this is in, you know, you can see in 1492 where it says at Granada, 1492. Um, and let's see if we can find a good place to start where it says, the number of those who were thus banished from Spain were 400,000 Jews, according to Ruchelin and others. So this initial initial estimate is 400,000 Jews. And let's keep it into perspective now. That's 400,000 of all always dark complexion, all black Jews that were living in ghettos. So 400,000 of those Jews that were always dark complexion, all dark, lived in ghettos and um, were called Negroes, right? And at the time they were called Negroes. All these Negroes were expelled from Spain. And let's keep reading. It says, most writers affirm that there were 170 families, or 170,000 families, or now we're talking about groups. And it says, others say that there were 800,000 persons, right? So 800,000 persons left Spain and came over into Portugal. And it's important here to, to note that that the Jews that were coming into Portugal, that, they, that the numbers that we're reading so far are just the Jews coming into Portugal. There's no mention of the number of Jews that were already in Portugal, right? So in other words, it's 800,000 or 400,000 plus the two, roughly 200,000 or so Jews that were already in Portugal. And as you can see where it says a prodigious number, the takeaway here is to know that, that there were a lot of Jews that were expelled and they fled into Portugal. In some cases, you may have a, roughly around a million Jews or a little bit less than that. In either case, it was a lot of people. Now, if you're looking at your screen, what you're looking at is a picture of a concert that took place in Woodstock. And this, this was back in the 70s. And this concert is known because of the uh, the number of people that attended. I believe the rough estimate was 600,000 people. So what you're looking at is a picture of what 600,000 people would look like. And if you notice, all the people that they couldn't all fit in the frame. So we're only looking at a small, at a portion of 600,000 people. And if you, you take a look at that and in your mind you can envision an all black people, always dark complexion, 
that lived in ghettos and that were called Negroes, 600,000, this is what they would have looked like. And as you can tell, this was a big event. This was a, a, a colossal event that occurred less than 10 years before the transatlantic slave trade started. So less than 10 years before the transatlantic slave trade started, you had you know, roughly around this many people leaving Spain and going over to Portugal just before the transatlantic slave trade, which started in 1501. And after they came into Portugal, and you know, of course, the king of Portugal only admitted them into Portugal with the, um, you know, with the understanding that they would only stay there for six months, and that each person had to pay eight to six. I believe it was either six or eight pieces of gold. And if they couldn't pay that amount of money, they had their children taken away from them. Right? They had their children taken away from them. And that too was a major event. And this is where I tell folks is that just before the transatlantic slave trade, we have a quite a few major events happen back to back to back, right? Back to back to back. And this was truly a time of Jacob's trouble. Now, we're going to take a look at this reference because this reference shows us or confirms that the Jews that were over in Portugal, that something happened to them while they were in Portugal. And it's this, this here from the official chronicler of Garcia de Resendi, who was the official chronicler of King John II. And it reads, it says, King, the official chronicler of King John II, Garcia de Resendi, reports on one of the methods to populate this island that also throws some light on the tragic form of Jewish participation in the Portuguese Atlantic Empire. It reads, the king had allowed Jewish refugees from Spain from where they had been expelled in 1492, so the Jewish refugees had been expelled in Spain, 1492, to remain in Portugal only in return for payment of an enormous ransom. We talked about that. In 1493, those who could not pay had their children taken away from them, baptized by force, and deported or sent to Sao Tome, which was the west or which is the west coast of Africa, in order to be raised as Christians, one, and to help populate the island. Two. So the takeaway here is that the children were taken away from their parents in great numbers, or I'm sorry, we haven't proven that they were taken there in great numbers, but we'll read some references later to show that it was that the children were taken in great numbers to the west coast of Africa, and the purpose was twofold. One, they were to be raised as Christians, and two, they were sent there to populate the island. And as we look through our references, we find out that on Sao Tome, they established breeding farms. They established breeding farms for the, these children to have more babies and populate the island. And eventually we'll want to explore that to see exactly what happened to these babies that were born on the west coast of Africa that were also raised to be Christians, right? They were raised to be Christians and they were sent to breeding farms. And what I tell people is that one of the unique characteristics of so-called African-Americans is that we do not know our history. If you speak to some of our fellow Africans over on the West Coast of Africa, they know their history. You know, they will be able to tell you that their oral history and it goes back for many years and that they have practices that go back many years. But one of the distinct characteristics of the so-called African-American is that we do not know our history. And you have to ask yourself, how do you get a person to not know their history or to not have an oral tradition passed down to them? Well, in order to do that, you have to separate the children from the parents. And we see this on the West Coast of Africa, that the children of the Jews were separated from their parents. Now, let's read a, a couple of a few other references to, to prove our point. As far as the children being separated from their parents, and it says, 
Unfortunately, during the time of the expulsion, the plague was raging in Castile, which was uh, Spain. And it says the fugitives brought with them the disease, propagating it wherever they went and not unnaturally causing their advent to be viewed with loathing and horror. So basically, the Jews were, were as they fled from Spain, they were under the curses of Deuteronomy 28. And one of the curses was that the disease would follow the Jews wherever they went. So as these Jews came into Portugal, just like the Bible said, it would, the disease followed them into Portugal. And it said, this circumstance induced King John to hasten their departure from Portugal. So in other words, with that disease, King John wanted the Jews to get out. And for which purpose ships were duly provided according to the agreement. So it says King John provided some ships. It says, but such was the temper of the captains and the sailors that they subjected the Jews to the hardest possible condition. It said they plundered them of their goods and valuables even to their very clothes and landed them naked and bare of everything on barren points of the African coast, leaving them to die of starvation or to be sold into slavery to the Moors. Nor was that all, or nor was this all. The king wrested from their parents all the children between the ages of three and ten. Of those Jews, of those Jewish immigrants who from poverty or otherwise had omitted to pay the capitation tax on entering, on entering, or who were forced to remain in Portugal and had their and had them transported to the newly discovered islands of St. Thomas, which was swarmed with alligators and other beasts of prey to be brought up as Christians. So again, in this reference, we learn that the children of the Jews were sent to the west coast of Africa. And again, this one confirms that they were to be raised as Christians. And also, this reference also shows that it wasn't just the children of the Jews that couldn't pay the uh, capitation tax, but it was also the Jews that remained after the deadline had passed. Those Jews also had their children taken away from them. So the king of Portugal actually gave these Jews an option. And the option was, it was the same option that, that Spain gave the Jews. It was like, you could either convert to Christianity or you had to leave. So the whole reason why our ancestors left Spain was because they refused to throw away the laws, statutes, and the commandments of the Most High. They would rather sell their goods, sell their property, endure hardships, leave the country that they lived in, rather than throw away the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High Yah. This speaks volumes to our ancestors and to our forefathers. It speaks volumes to their character. And not only that, once they left Spain and came over to Portugal, again, they were asked to, or given the option of turning to Christianity, or they had to leave the country and they would also have their children taken away from them, right? And yet our forefathers still refused to throw away the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Most High Yah, right? So again, this speaks of the character of our forefathers and the evil actions of Spain and Portugal during this time. All right, so let's keep reading. Let's read our next reference, which reads, the Jews, after their admission into Portugal, were no less unfortunate than other exiles from Spain. It says, in the year 1493, when King John II conferred the singlery of St. Thomas Isles upon Don Alvaro, it says, he obliged the latter to people the island. So again, this too is confirming what we've read so far. It says, and for this purpose ordered that all the Jews should have their their sons and daughters of tender age taken away from them and that after the baptism of the latter these should be handed over as was done to Don Alvaro for the purpose of peopling the said island of St. Thomas so again their purpose was to go into breeding farms to people the island to have babies right to have babies on the island and as the reference said to be raised as christians all right 
So hopefully we're starting, we should know that this was a major, major, major event. This was a major event of having these children taken to the west coast of Africa. Now let's keep in mind that these are the children that were always dark complexion, all black, they lived in ghettos, they were called Negroes, and they were expelled from Spain over into Portugal, and now they're being placed on the west coast of Africa into breeding farms, being raised as Christians, less than 10 years before the transatlantic slave trade. I think I just need to say that just one more time, and I'm sorry for repeating myself, but I just wanna make sure we grasp what just happened, right? So over in Spain and Portugal, so we had 800,000, 400,000, always dark complexion, all black Jews who lived in ghettos, right? Who called Negroes were, they were expelled and came over to Portugal, right? Because they refused to throw away the most high Yah's law, statutes, and commandments. And once we got over there, the children of the Jews were taken away and sent over to the west coast of Africa to become Christians and to go into breeding farms so that they can populate the islands, have babies, right? Okay, so now that we understand that, let's go over to our next, next quote. And the next reference reads, Thy sons and thy daughters have been given unto another people. How exactly has this prophecy been fulfilled in several countries, especially in Spain and Portugal? In the former of these kingdoms, the Council of Toledo decreed that the children of the Jews should be taken from them and educated in the Christian faith. When they were expelled, all under 14 years of age were forcibly detained to be baptized. And I will note that in other references, it shows that later the uh, the king increased the age from 14. Just in all the references that we've read so far, you know, we're strictly focusing on the children from, uh, I believe, the ages of 3 and 10. Uh, but it's also important to note that the king later increased the age of children that were taken from their parents to children in their 20s or young adults in their 20s, right? Like I, again, like I said, this was a major, major, major event just before the transatlantic slave trade starts. All right, so let's keep reading. It says, the first design of settling there was in the year 1486, but perceiving how many perished in the attempt in that they could better agree with that of the continent on the coast of Guinea, it was resolved by King John II of Portugal that all the Jews within his dominion, listen, it says, which were vastly numerous, all right? So this confirms that the Jews that came over into his kingdom or the Jews that were living in his kingdom were vastly numerous. There was a lot of them, right? Because we were reading 800,000, 400,000, and we were also looking at that picture of Woodstock just to see what 600,000 people looked like of all black Negroes looked like, right? And it says, should be obliged to receive baptism or upon refusal. So again, they were obliged to see receive the baptism, the baptism of Roman Christianity, right? Of the Roman version of Christianity, or upon refusal be transported to the coast of Guinea, where the Portuguese had already considerable or several considerable settlements and a good trade considering the time since its first discovery. So again, we see time and time again that the whole reason why the children were placed on the west coast of Africa was because our forefathers refused to throw away the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Most High Yacht. So the Portuguese and the Spaniards took the children away from the parents in order to reprogram or to raise these children up to, to throw away the law, statutes, and commandments. In other words, that was the only way that they could get the Jews to throw away the most highest law, statutes, and commandments was to take the children away from the mothers and their fathers, give them to complete strangers, and raise them to be Christians, and as you will see in this next quote, raise them to be slaves. All right, so let's read it. In this reference, it says, 
all Jewish children below 14 years of age were torn from their parents' arms, dragged into the church, baptized, and it says those under three years of age were given to Christians. So let's let's pause here for a moment. So the children from you know from infant, you know, newborn to three years old, right? And that's uh daycare. I believe that's the, the children that you would find in daycares today. These children were taken from their parents. And again, what I tell people is that this was a major event that happened. And this is why you find this event in numerous sources, because a lot of people were writing about it. You know, anytime you're, if you can imagine trying to take a child from their parents, that is a major altercation incurred. And in other references, it goes in and it describes how they did it. It shows that they were they used clubs and violently used those clubs on the mothers and fathers and hitting them. And, you know, you can imagine them hitting them on the head and the damage that incurred and parents strewn all over the ground as they were knocked out or killed by these clubs and other instruments that they used to separate the children. And in some of these these references, it talks about the whales. Right. If you separating a, a three-year-old or a ten-year-old or a child from their mothers you know the, of course the children are going to be screaming whether it be mothers or, or the sons or daughters the fathers are going to be screaming the the wives are going to be screaming and on top of that this happened to a large body of people so this was a thousands of people that this happened to on a, on a particular day so this was a day to be remembered Right. This was a day that a lot of people were talking about because there was just so much going on. You had the, the children being taken and thrown onto the ships. Even as the ships were pulling out, you can imagine that the children were still crying out to their mothers and fathers. And, you know, and as the, the mothers or fathers heard their children screaming that they even there's there's even references that talk about parents jumping into the water after the ships and trying to swim after the ships only to drown in the waves and then for their dead bodies to wash ashore. Again, this was a major event. And keep in mind that these were always dark complexion, all dark people that lived in ghettos that were called Negroes. To make this matter even worse, these children were going away to be raised by complete strangers that hated them. Right. You know, I, I can't exp I can't spend enough time describing this event, but just know that this was a major event. But let's keep reading. So the first we stopped off by reading that the, the children under three years of age were torn from their parents and given to Christians. And it says to receive a Christian education. And then it says, or in other words, to be raised as slaves. So here we see the intention of raising these children as Christians was to be. The intention was for these children to be slaves. I'll say it again. The intention was for these children were to be slaves and to be Christians. Right. So it was, you know, now if we're keeping track, there was we're, we see that there are three purposes for the children to be taken from their parents. They were to be raised as Christians and they were to become slaves and they were to people the island or they were to go into breeding farms. Those three things. And let's finish up this reference. And it says those between the ages of three and 10 years old were put on board of a ship conveyed to the newly discovered unwholesome island of St. Thomas. All right. So I do want to point out that at this point, Portugal is raising up two groups of slaves. I'll say it again. At this point, Portugal was raising up two groups of slaves. So the, remember, the children from the ages of under the ages of three years old were given to Christians in Portugal to be raised as slaves or Portugal and, and possibly Spain to be raised as slaves. So we have a group of slaves that were being raised in Portugal. But then we have children sent to the West Coast of Africa to be raised as slaves as well. And I believe, let's see, those, and if I jump down to the bottom of the box there, the red box that it says, those between 10 and 14 years were sold as slaves. All right, so again, keep in mind that we're starting to see 
two groups of slaves form just before the transatlantic slave trade. We have slaves in the Iberian Peninsula, which is Spain and Portugal. And now we have slaves, uh, we're raising slaves on the west coast of Africa. All right. Again, this is less than 10 years before the transatlantic slave trade. And I put this reference in just so that we can see that when the slaves were expelled from Spain and Portugal, that this occurred over a span of time. For example, in this reference it reads, the northern coast of Africa and the inhabitable regions inland were full of Jews of Spanish descent, right? Were full of Jews of Spanish descent. It says they had congregated there in great numbers during the century from the persecution of 1391 to their total expulsion, which was in you know, 1493. So again, you know, this reference shows us that the Jews were in great numbers over in Africa. You know, and of course, we don't see that in these modern day books. So again, this is why I point people to these older books. Now, I do want to make note of one thing is that if you ever heard of the term of Negro land, right? If you ever heard people talk about maps of uh, West Africa or Northern Africa where you see Negro land or so you did. What I also tell folks is that if you do your homework, You'll be hard pressed to find a map with Negro land or so you then uh, identified before these Spanish Jews were kicked out. In other words, you won't find and I, I challenge folks to go in to go and do their research to see if you can find a, um, a map of Negro land before the Jews were expelled from Spain and Portugal. In other words, it wasn't until after these Spanish or Portuguese Jews were expelled from, from the Iberian Peninsula, then you see Negro land show up on maps. And remember, you know, Negro, the word Negro is Spanish and Portuguese. So it makes sense that we see Negro, Spanish and Portuguese word for black land in Africa after these Jews of Spanish descent were kicked out. All right. So I just want to point that out. All right. So let's keep going. So in our next reference, this is a good reference just to show what happened to the children. It says the Castilian Jews who from poverty or any other cause had not departed at the limited time. The king ordered should be taken for slaves over in the Iberian Peninsula. And it says, according to the terms of their entrance, and it says, and distributed them to whoever asked for them. His inhumanity did not cease there. It says, he tore their young children from them and had them baptized. Being at the time desirous of peopling his newly discovered acquisition on the coast of Africa, going into breeding farms. Then it says, the island of, of St. Thomas, he sent them to it with the new governor, Alvaro. And it says, so that by being, listen, it says, so that by being separated, from their parents and marrying people in the island, they might become good Christians. All right, so you can see this reference gives insight to the whole purpose of separating the children from their parents so that they could raise or, or reprogram these children to throw away the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High, right? To throw away the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. And I do want to take time to point out that a lot of times, you know, they didn't persecute or expel these Jews uh, because they did not believe in Mashiach. Because what you'll see in some of these other references, if not in this video, you'll see it in some other, other videos, that there were some Jews that actually did believe in Mashiach. But they were persecuted mainly for following the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High Yah. Unfortunately, they, they became what's referred to as new Christians. In other words, they came to the pressures and became, you know, Roman Christians. And when they became Roman Christians, they were termed new Christians. And so even though they became new Christians, they too were targeted by the Inquisition and also either killed or expelled from the Iberian Peninsula. So again, it wasn't because they did not believe in Hamashiach or Messiah. That wasn't the reason why they were being persecuted it was because they were attempting to follow the law statutes and commandments of the most high god 
That's why they were being persecuted. And on to our next reference, which reads, Barbet states that in the reign of King John II and about the close of the 15th century, it says, large numbers of Jews were expelled from Portugal and taken to the coast of Southern Guinea, all right, which was the west coast of Africa. All right. So again, um, you know, the purpose of showing this reference to show you that there were large numbers of always dark complexion, all dark Jews who lived in ghettos, who uh, were called Negroes, were these large numbers of Jews, the children, were being sent to the West Coast of Africa. All right. All right. So hopefully we have enough references to at least prove that these black Jews were being placed on the West Coast of Africa in great numbers less than 10 years before the start of the transatlantic slave trade all right but let's read a quick reference about the transatlantic slave trade because most folks don't know that when the transatlantic slave trade started in the year 1501 between the year 1501 and 1518 that the slaves came from spain and portugal i'll say it again the first slaves of the transatlantic slave trade the first slaves of the transatlantic slave trade came from the Iberian Peninsula, which is Spain and Portugal. And you can find that in a charter uh, that was written to the Emperor Charles uh, V. And you can see a copy of the charter. I mean, the original document is, is up to the top. It's hard to read. It's in uh, cursive, I believe. But you can read the, um, the summary right just below it where it says, all right, this charter granted by Emperor Charles V to Lorenzo de Gorovod for permission to transport slaves. It says Spain in 18 August in 1518, courtesy of the archives in Spain. And it says before 1518, the slave trade was highly regulated and consistent mostly of slaves being brought from Spain to the Americas directly by the Spanish government. All right, so these slaves didn't come from Africa. The first slaves of the transatlantic slave trade came from the Iberian Peninsula or Spain and Portugal. All right, so in, let's read uh, just another reference. This is um, a reference by John Ogilvy. It's America, um, you can see the, the title there on the screen. I just want to show you that a lot of this truth is it is captured in books it's just that the books that they're captured in you know they're often priced very high right for instance like this book uh, by John Ogilvy you can find like if you wanted to try to get a hard copy of this book this book will cost you $65,000 right $65,000 and you got to ask yourself why would a book cost $65,000 and you know it's, it's really because of the truth that's contained in these books it's about the truth that's contained in these books and let me show you like for instance in this book that's cost $65,000 if you go over to page uh, 574 it has something interesting to say about the um, you know the children of the Jews that were placed on the west coast of Africa. Because remember, you know, all the references that we read up, read up to now, you know, told us that the Jews were placed on the west coast of Africa in great numbers. But let's see what this $65,000 book has to say about those Jews who were placed on the west coast of Africa. And it says, John the Third, king of Portugal, sent a colony thither above 200 years before. Whom though the unwholesome air destroyed, yet the place was not left desolate. For he sent new inhabitants who first settled Guinea, which is the west coast of Africa, next in Angola, the west coast of Africa, and lastly on the island of St. Thomas, the west coast of Africa, that so they might be better used to the air. And it says that the said king sold all those Jews for slaves that refused to embrace the Roman religion. So it tells us that the whole reason why these black Jews went into slavery was because they refused to throw away the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Most High God. 
right? That's the whole reason why they went into slavery. And it says that refused to embrace the Roman religion. It says, listen, it says, and caused their children to be baptized, from whom these children coming thither in great numbers, west coast of Africa, it says most of the present inhabitants were descended. So according to this reference, most of the present inhabitants of the west coast of Africa were descended. And we can understand that because remember in the other references, we saw that these children were sent to populate. They were sent there to populate. And in fact, they were sent over to breeding farms. They were sent over to breeding farms. All right. All right. So I you know, just want to take a quick review of the uh, of our timeline, just so that you can see if you look at the time mark of uh, 1492, where the you see where the Jews were expelled from Spain and then you see they were expelled from Portugal, placed on the west coast of Africa. And then shortly thereafter, the transatlantic slave trade kicks off. All right. The transatlantic slave trade starts.